Let's take a brief look at what our textbook highlights as the basics of the Gospel of John, which they identify as eternal life through his name, which is indeed uh, an important theme in the Gospel of John. Here is pictured what you would see today if you went to the site of Ephesus. There is a theater there that was there in the time of the New Testament. It's largely believed that the Apostle John was at this location when this theater was, uh, was used in the New Testament time. Gives you a picture of, of maybe where John was when the Gospel was written. About the writing of John's Gospel. It has long been believed that the John who wrote this Gospel is John the Apostle. That's been said so, so by uh, Christian writers for centuries and centuries, and we have records that go back as far as 110. And as we will uh, see in a moment, it's largely agreed that the Gospel of John was written around the year 90, and so that's a very short time after the Gospel was written. There are modern scholars who disagree, uh, in fact, quite a few, uh, who disagree that what we have is what the Apostle John wrote. Briefly, their reasoning is that themes like Christology, the nature of Christ, are so much more intricately developed than they are in the other four Gospels that this uh, must have been written at a much later time. Uh, they assume that Christians did not know these insights in John's time. It's not at all necessary to accept their reasoning. There is no external evidence, no historical evidence that would indicate that the Gospels were not written very, very early, meaning around 90. It's their interpretation that leads them to believe that it was written later by people, a group of people uh, who considered themselves perhaps uh, people who had learned what John was, was teaching in his day and time. It is true that the Gospel of John is more reflective than Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but if it's written 30 or 40 years later, and if it's written by the last of the apostles to be alive in his last years, you would expect it to be more reflective. As I said, the generally agreed date is around 90 from Ephesus. There is strong tradition that indicates that John lived that long, that he was the last of the apostles to die, and that he was there in Ephesus near the end of his life. Now there are objections to that, but those are the same objections we were just talking about when we talked about whether John the Apostle is the author. My understanding, as well as that that is, uh, that is presented as most reasonable in your textbook, is that it was John the Apostle who wrote this gospel, and that it was around AD 90, and that it was from the important city of Ephesus. There are important themes highlighted in your textbook, themes that are developed throughout the Gospel of John. This is a good way of organizing your thoughts and, and coming to understand the uh, individual sections of John. You know what themes seem to be emphasized throughout the gospel. The first one in their list is that Jesus is divine. In essence, and because of certain qualities, we must look at Jesus as the divine one, or as the Gospel of John says in its very opening lines, in the beginning was the Word. The same chapter goes on to define the Word as Jesus. He is the Word. He is the unique, only begotten Son of God. He is referred to as Lord, the I Am, a term that harkens back to God identifying himself to Moses on Mount Sinai. And he is even referred to as God, for instance, when Doubting Thomas comes to believe and he bows down to Jesus and calls him my Lord and my God. 
The Gospel of John presents Jesus as a unique divine messenger. Jesus explains that no one is able to give a message like he is able to give directly from his Father in heaven because he is from above and all these people are not. John also frequents the theme that Jesus is the fulfillment of all that Israel has hoped for and needs, and beyond that, that Jesus is the fulfillment of all that people hope for and all that people need. He is presented as Israel's Messiah, the promised deliverer, anointed one, the King of Israel, the Lamb of God, very much uh, undertones of the sacrificial system of the Jews there, the Son of Man, a term from the Old Testament about God's appointed one. And yet, John also refers to Jesus as the Savior of the world, the light of the world, not just of Israel. The other side of that coin, so to speak, in the beginning was the Word. The other side is, and the Word became flesh. Or as is spelled out in that first chapter of John, he lived among people. You learn that he lived in Nazareth with a family. You see when he gets thirsty, you see when he weeps, you see when he dies and is buried. You see dramatically that after the crucifixion, he has nail marks in his hands and a wound in his side. This together is the incarnation. This is the word made flesh, God coming into the world in the person of Jesus. From another perspective, perhaps the theme in John is believing. The word believe occurs in John almost a hundred times, always as a verb, interestingly. Faith is something you do, it's not just something you have. What kind of believing? Well, in John, Jesus calls people to believe in him to believe in his name, that is, to believe in who he is, to believe in his message, to believe in his fulfillment of all the messianic hopes of God's chosen people. He calls for people to believe in his special relationship with the Father in heaven. John also thematically emphasizes the eternal realm of the Spirit, a special emphasis on eternal life, the working of God's Holy Spirit, and the miraculous signs that Jesus performed. Beyond that, also emphasis on the love of God and the resulting conflict in the world that people have who do love God. These are important themes in the Gospel of John. I want you to look at just a couple of slides about what stands out in the structure of the Gospel of John. There is a literary device that shows up uh, seven times in the Gospel of John where Jesus says, I am. He says, I am the bread of life. I am the living bread. I am the light of the world. I am from above. I am not of this world. I am the gate for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way and the truth and the life. I am the true vine. The Gospel of John does not ask you to believe in Jesus as a doctrine of a religious society. The Gospel of John calls on you to believe in who Jesus says he is, in these particular figures of speech. And we'll have time in our next lesson, when we look at some of the specific passages, to look at what Jesus is calling you to believe about him when he says, I am. I want to add one short list.
to uh, the ones that you had in your textbook. And that is the signs in John. It's been said for some time that there are seven signs in John, but that depends on how you count them. But if you were to list seven signs in the ministry of Jesus before he went to the cross, we're told the first of his signs. Now that's an odd phrase because if you look earlier, um, when he calls one of the disciples, he miraculously, seems like he's miraculously saying, I saw you under the fig tree. But the first of the signs indicates that there's something of a structure in this uh, first half of the Gospel of John where signs show up again and again. And as you can see <clears throat> how they're spaced out there, they're fairly well spread through uh, the first part of his Gospel. The first then, identified as the first in the list, is the turning of water to wine. And then we get the second. It's named in the text as the second sign, the cleansing of the temple, which we'll talk about in the next lesson. Then we have some miracles that are not specified as a numbered sign, but we come in the fourth chapter to the healing of a noble man's son. In the fifth chapter, the healing of a lame man. In the sixth chapter, the feeding of the multitude, one that is in all four gospels. And this one is called a sign. People marveled at the sign that he had done. Followed in the ninth chapter by a healing of a blind man. And then as a climax in the 11th chapter, the raising of Lazarus from the dead. The impact of that miracle, that sign, is still being referenced in the next chapter as people in Jerusalem are talking about uh, what Jesus had done uh, when they heard that he had done this sign, talking about Lazarus. There are different words for these healings and, um, and other miracles. Miracles, of course, you're familiar with, but the term frequently in John is that it was a sign, not just that it was something that was that required supernatural power, but it was a sign a sign of who Jesus is. And that fits with the theme of, of John as being all about believing. The end of John, and actually, and we'll look at this again in the next lesson, it, it kind of has two ends. It has an end and then it has a, oh, let me tell you this too, and then it has an end again. At the end of the Gospel of John, we read, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. John has told us why he's written his gospel. He's told us why he has included the miraculous signs. They are all to bring you to believe. To believe who Jesus is, he is the Christ. He is the Son of God. And these are written so that as you believe, you can have life in his name. When he again ties up his gospel, this time in chapter 21 and verse 25, John writes, Now there are also many other things that Jesus did. Were every one of them to be written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. John writes a great testimony as an eyewitness of things in the life of Christ. He gives a deeply reflective account of events in the life of Christ and teachings of Christ, events and teachings that he's had time to reflect on for decades now since Jesus ascended back into heaven. So with this structure, I want you to carefully read at least the first 11 chapters of John, and we'll talk about particular passages in our next lesson.